Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to do an updated version of the ear structure video that I do have in my playlist. I've updated this one because the last one I made was back in 2020. It was for when my pupils were in lockdown. And so I wanted to make a newer, fresher, easier to understand video so that you can get the best results in your exams. Now, if you are new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. If you are in matric and you're looking for a little extra help, you should think about joining my Smart Start series, which is a workshop video set that you can get on my website, especially if you're looking for more, let's say, exam guidance. Like you really want to fine tune your exams and you want to fix those problems and also just establish how good you are at certain topics and you want to see me teach um, in these workshops, then you can get that on my website at missangler.co.za. So let's dive into this video and we're going to start off with an introduction to the ear structure, its anatomy and functions. So first things first, let's look at our outer structure of our ear. This is the pinna. We would call these our ears and their function is to trap sounds, right? So we need to trap sound waves and we need to direct them into the middle and inner ear. So that's what the purpose of the pinna are for. The next structure is going to be this long canal here, which is our ear canal. Different textbooks might have a slightly different name, but ear canal is an acceptable term that you can use. And basically, its main function is to just direct sound to the eardrum, or I actually like to use its proper name, the tympanic membrane. Which brings me to our next label, the tympanic membrane. Now, yes, you can also call it the eardrum. I know that that is an easier word to remember, but I like to use the word tympanic membrane because that's exactly what it is, a membrane. And if you understand it's a membrane, it will make the next thing I'm going to teach you a little bit easier to understand. The final thing that I want to show you on this picture, which is a lot more clearer than the diagrams we're going to use later, is this tube over here. This is called the astation or the astuchine tube however you want to pronounce it. And essentially, its main function, as you can notice, is that it sits in the middle ear and it actually allows pressure and any kind of fluid to drain away and actually drain into the back of your throat. You see, what happens sometimes is that you can get an infection and all of that infection can build up inside of your middle ear, preventing the ossicles from moving. And when they can't move, you can't hear. Another symptom that you might be familiar with is when your uh, astuchine or your eustachian tubes are blocked, you kind of can hear your voice inside your head and you often you know, unblock your ears by holding your nose and breathing out. And what you're doing there is you are maintaining the pressure. And that's really important. A lot of matrix write the eustachian tube equalizes pressure. Yes, it does. But when you are writing its function, you must say it maintains the pressure. Please do not write it equalizes the pressure. The equalizing aspect is more like how it's doing it. Whereas when we want the function, we want a why they are doing it. Now, what I've done here is I've zoomed in now so that we can see the tympanic membrane on its own. Here it is. And we're going to focus more on the middle and inner ear. So we already have the tympanic membrane. And you'll notice it's quite a large surface. Attached to the tympanic membrane are these three bones. One, two, and three. Those three bones collectively have the name ossicles. Now, I'm going to pause on them for a while and explain exactly what they do. The ossicles' main function is what we call amplification. So what is amplification? Amplification is making sounds louder 
but also clearer. And so how do they do that? Well, because the bones are ordered from largest to smallest, we are able to amplify the sound. And if I were to draw you a simplified image of what this looks like, we have the tympanic membrane, which is a really large surface area. And then we go into a smaller bone, and then a smaller bone, and then the smallest bone. And the fact that we are going from this large surface to this teeny tiny bone at the end, that is amplification. Now, if you're looking for a great explanation on amplification, I do have a phenomenal explanation in my cheat sheet, in my study guide, and I explain exactly how to explain um, amplification and hearing as well. Now, another important function with the ossicles has to be what they actually do with sound. I'm adding this below here, but ossicles, they convert sound waves into mechanical movement because the way in which they move up against each other is a mechanical movement. So we're converting an energy here. Now, the final thing that ossicles do is they transfer uh, those mechanical movements, those waves that we've transferred and converted into mechanical movement, they are going to transfer them into the innermost part of your ear. So to establish, I'm going to just draw a little dotted line from here to here, around that bone. That is the middle ear. Everything else, which includes this whole pink and yellow structure, that whole bit there that I'm kind of circling around, that is the inner ear, and that's where we actually hear. Now, I am going to break this up into another video about how we actually hear, but I'm going to give you some simplification here. Do you see where this very last ossicle bone uh, is touching this structure, this pink structure? What we can't see in that diagram is another membrane. It's hidden underneath there. And that membrane is called the oval window. And the oval window is an opening into the cochlea. What is the cochlea? The cochlea is this pink snail-shelled structure. But just this lower area over here. Actually, I want to move my line a bit over because it's a bit too low down. It is a little higher. Let's put it up here. It's over there. So that is our cochlea. And the cochlea is going to take that mechanical movement and it's going to convert it into an impulse. And that is really, really important to mention everyone, the conversion into an impulse. Often it is a thing that we leave off in exams and that's why we don't get full marks. If you want more information about how that works, I am bringing out a new video later this week on the cochlea. I'm updating my old video and so you should check that out, exactly how we convert sound into an electrical impulse that goes to the brain. Now, the last few things that I want to point out in the inner ear, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail right now because it's going to be covered in its very own videos. But the first one that I want to cover is the vestibular apparatus, which is these kind of bendy, windy tubes that we can see up here. And they are responsible for your balance and your posture. It's quite technical how they do that, so please go and watch the video for that. I can link it above, um, but also note that I am bringing out updated videos as well. So to check which is the latest video, you can look at my grade 12 playlist and have a look at there. Now, as always, I like to finish off my lessons with a terminology recap. These words can be used in a terminology list, 
but they can also be used as a set of flashcards. Now, starting off at the very beginning, we spoke about the pinner. Remember, those are your ears. They are the ones trapping the sound waves and directing them into your ear canal. The ear canal itself is the tube that brings the sound from the outside of your ear into the middle ear itself, and that is where it interacts with the very first membrane, the tympanic membrane, also known as the eardrum. That's going to vibrate and it's going to convert uh, sound waves into vibrations. From there, those vibrations are going to move the ossicles. The ossicles, which are the three bones of the ear, the um, anvil, hammer, and the stirrup, those three bones knock against one another and they amplify sound, making it louder and clearer. Now, it's from there that the very last ossicle bumps against the oval window. Now, the oval window is a small opening. It's a membranous opening into the cochlea, and it knocks against the oval window, and we take those vibrations and we um, convert them into pressure waves in the lymph fluid in the cochlea. The round window is another membranous opening in the cochlea that allows out... Um, you know, like excess sounds in the cochlea. So what that means is as sound goes into the cochlea, we don't want any reverberation. So we need to allow the sound to escape. Then we spoke about the astutian tube. The astutian tube or the astuchine tube is a tube that drains into the back of your throat. Um, and its main purpose is to maintain the pressure of the ear. That's kind of that popping sensation you can do with your ears and that maintains the pressure inside the ear and on the outside as well. We then covered the cochlea. The cochlea is um, the part of your ear that looks like a snail shell. That is the part of the ear that houses um, your nerves that allow you to hear. And then last but not least, the vestibular apparatus. That is the part of your inner ear that is responsible for balance and posture. Now, I am going to go into a lot more detail on the cochlea and the vestibular apparatus in follow-up videos. So make sure you have a look through the grade 12 playlist for those. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.